tutorial is going to show you how to make a castle tower just as the one shown here it goes together with last week's tutorial the castle wall you're going to need two pieces of blue foam also known as styrofoam a modeling foam all the foam is two inches or 50 millimeters thick there are two pieces measuring four inches by eight inches or 100 by 200 millimeters and then there's a long strip that is one inch or 25 millimeters thick. Here you can see me marking 100 millimeter or four inch strips and then using a square to make sure that I get a perpendicular line to the edge of the material. Each of these I'll cut out for later use. Remember folks, when cutting with a knife make sure your thumb isn't underneath the blade. It can get very slippery that way. In the next stage I'm going to fix the two pieces of blue foam together. In order to do this I twist them round to make sure I get the best fit. I then use a non-solvent or solvent free or water based contact adhesive. The solvent based contact adhesive will have an adverse effect on the polystyrene. push them together, wipe off the excess from around the edges and then leave to dry. While the two pieces of foam are setting I can start marking out the battlements. So I take uh, the smaller pieces of foam that I cut out earlier and mark 12 millimeters or half an inch along each edge. Then along the bottom edge of one of these pieces, I mark half an inch along the bottom. Once those lines are marked, I can then take my box cutter and work down those two lines. Essentially, I'm taking off a triangular piece all the way along the edge. This will be a nice feature when we come to put the castle together later. You can then see me using the knife to shave off any bits to make it appear better. Now that that piece has been removed, I can start to focus on the teeth of the battlements. Using a pencil and a ruler, I start by marking half an inch in from the edge, and then one inch blocks, and then that will leave me half an inch from the very edge. I then use the square to make sure my lines are at a right angle to the edge of the material. The square also enables me to make sure that the lines across the top are also square. And there you can see up close the markings. Next I'm going to cut down the vertices using the box cutter again. And I cut those all the way to the line indicated for the bottom of the teeth. I say the teeth. The correct name is Merlons and Pearls. Once the vertices are cut, I can then cut a diagonal line to remove the unwanted material and you can see me doing that. Again be careful not to force the blade because you are going to catch your hand. I then flip the knife over, cut the other way which leaves a small triangle at the bottom. I then bring in a craft knife and gradually just carve out the rest of the unwanted material. The first triangle cut that's taken out we keep because that will be a feature and you will see me in a minute place it underneath the battlement and it looks like a support when it goes on the actual tower. Often during the construction process it's handy to get the pieces together like I am here just to dry fit them. You're not using glue, you just put them together to see what they're going to look like. This is a very useful piece of equipment to make when using blue foam. It's essentially three pieces of glass paper glued to an MDF board. 
transport of the glass paper is in three different gradients. So then when you get rough edges that you don't want, you can simply brush it along the glass paper, the different grains, and it will take it down. It does. I've been using this now for eight months, a year, and it's still going with the original piece of glass paper. You can see some of them are a bit rough, but others, it's still working fine. If you use glass paper or sandpaper in your hand, you'll find that there's a tendency to round the corners. It's the natural curve of the arm. Whereas if you're working against the board, you get a nice level finish. So I start with the battlements and just work away the rough, any rough cut marks that may be there. Or if I want a really smooth wall, I can keep going until it's perfectly smooth. I then take the two pieces, or the one piece as it is now, glued together, and you'll see the steps there where there is a slight difference, and then I start working it through. And it doesn't take long, I mean this is filmed at twice speed, but you can see it doesn't take long to remove those considerable differences between the two towers. You don't want to be too vigorous though, because if you take too much material off, your tower is essentially going to be a different size. Don't forget, as well as the sides, you'll also need to do the top and the bottom to make sure that it stands up perfectly alongside your troops. Next, I'm going to mark out half an inch or 12mm strips all the way down the side of the material, and then I'm going to join these lines up. These are going to indicate the brickwork or mortise work for my castle. You can see here the complete brickwork and how I staggered each course so it looks like the blocks are going round the corner of the tower. I then did the same for the battlements, marking half an inch in the gaps and then doing the uprights to match. Just to remind you folks, all I'm using here is a ruler and a HB pencil. I'm pressing quite firmly but this will be sufficient. You don't need to press down too hard in order to indicate the brickwork. Again here, using dry fit to show you the pieces fitting together. I then, now I've marked the front, move on to marking the back of the battlements. It's time now to fix the battlements to the actual tower. And in order to use that, out comes the contact adhesive again. I'm using a lollipop stick um, and I just spread it along the bottom half of the back of the battlements, making sure not to put too much on. And then I line it up with one of the courses of brickwork to make sure an even coverage all the way around. Usually you're going to cover your top two courses as you can see me doing there. The most important thing though is to make sure that the corners of the battlements line up. Once all four of the battlements are glued in place, give it an overview just to make sure they're lined up and then you can put it to the side to let the glue cure. Okay, I've gone back to the triangles now and I'm going to centre those up with the battlements that I've just put in place. This can be done at the same time as it's not going to knock the battlements apart. If, as long as you've got a few minutes to start, the contact adhesive will hold it in place while you're fitting these triangles.
Now the glue on the battlements has fully set, it's time to fill the corners in. Now up until now, everything we've made has been by hand, so these are going to be different and we want them to fit perfectly. In order to do this, I take some of the leftover strips that we have earlier and start marking the important lines around the edge. Effectively, I'm drawing around the outside of the battlements. I'm now going to use a cutting knife and the box cutter to remove the unwanted material. I try and keep the piece that I'm cutting as square or as cuboid as long as I can because it makes it easier to handle when cutting. Cutting the angles all the way through and then blending them in later. I place it in the area to dry fit to see what needs to be done and then I can see I'm cutting across the diagonal so I mark that and then that's the next line I'm going to cut down. Another quick dry fit will see any other cuts that need to be made and we can see in order to fix it to the bottom I put the angle at the bottom. Now you will also see that that piece will not fit the other corners because they are slightly different so it's always worth numbering them to help you. You can see there I've marked them one through four so that as I cut the piece out you can identify which goes where. Once they're glued in place and the glue is set you can then mark the mortar work to match and it's just a case of lining up the lines that you've already drawn on the battlements. Painting the castle is a relatively simple process. I start off with black um, art paint, a paint kettle and a normal household brush. I then give a generous coat of the black paint all over the tower, trying to get in as many of the joints um, and crevices as I can. You have to wait for the next step until the black paint is totally dry. I then use dark grey, I know it appears white compared to the black, but it is dark grey, an artist brush and then just give the castle a heavy dry brushing. You can see me doing that there. I put the paint on a scrap piece of MDF first and spread it all over the brush to help in the dry brush process. In order to get the paint right into the corners I put the paintbrush in and then twist it round. That is the castle tower complete to go with the castle wall that we did last week. I'll leave you with a few pictures showing the feature in use with a couple of models fighting over it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial folks and I'll catch you again next week for the third instalment where we cover the gatehouse. Until then, take care.